let's eat pretzels while I talk about subliminals. Have you ever gotten those videos on your For You page that promise that it can change your race only if you listen to a Nightcore version of a K-pop song over a very interesting visualizer? I'm gonna wait. I'm guessing no. Okay, cause I have. And I, I've had my fair share of interactions. The people who have the engaged in this type of content, they brand themselves to be a part of this subliminal community. I mean, is there any scientific backing to their claim? Do subliminals really work? And I mean, if they do, if they do anything, then what do they do? What is a subliminal? In Charles Coe's 2008 essay entitled Subliminal Consciousness. He talks about how perception and thought can be affected by inputs that don't exactly reach our conscious awareness. And this is not any form of mind control. No, 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 no. It is a shift in processing and judgment that happens outside of conscious awareness. He kind of suggests that there's a continuum between the unconscious and the conscious. Somewhere in the middle of this continuum, Adam calls it the subliminal consciousness. So this is kind of the idea that the subliminal community, they took this concept, they kind of ran with it. They claim that through this form of intaking stimuli that falls below conscious perception, we are able to change things such as our eye color, our hair, race, biological traits that are far beyond mental persuasions. Is there really any validity to this? Well, Subliminal priming occurs when an individual is exposed to stimuli that is below the threshold of perception. Hmm, sound familiar? It's related to this concept called priming, which refers to an increased sensitivity for certain stimuli, which is a result from prior exposure to related visual or audio messages. I think there are many studies that have been done about subliminal priming, proving that it works. In 2005, Coiter and Depeau wrote this article where they talked about this study in which they aimed to test whether subliminal speech priming is even possible. So they did this by presenting an auditory prime stimuli that was time compressed and hidden within a stream of unintelligible noises. This is a similar model to how a lot of subliminals online work. They found that participants were able to absorb the prime, but only on a lexical level, meaning that they understood that they heard a word but they were not able to absorb any semantic contact. Another study that was done was by Barr and Biederman in 1998, and they wanted to test the visual aspect of subliminal priming, and they did this by flashing images for a very short duration of time, short enough so that it prevents any conscious awareness. What they found was that these primes could actually speed up later recognition and categorization for related objects, but they realized that once more, it was absorbed when it was the general contours and nothing semantically was actually absorbed. Okay, so the next one I present to you, it is something similar that is often utilized in a lot of online subliminal discourse. In 2015, Smarn, Daki, and Shrimp did a study called Drink Coca-Cola, Eat Popcorn, and Choose Powerade, where they tested whether subliminal advertising could actually persuade customers into buying things. And they did this by having either thirsty or non-thirsty participants watch a neutral clip that was embedded with subliminal flashes of words, such as Coca-Cola, Popcorn, or Powerade. And then afterwards, they asked these participants to partake in tasks that would indicate their purchasing intentions. They found that the subliminally primed brands were chosen more often, but this was only if participants were thirsty and asked about their purchase preferences right after the prime. Like this shows that subliminal priming is real, very weak, short-lived, it can only work under very certain conditions. Also, it can only be replicable in a lab, but it's real. In 2020, John Heslin introduced the concept of neurocognitive hacking as a hypothetical future capability within this growing cyber landscape. So he suggests that the human cognition can be subtly influenced by very well-designed stimuli. Design stimuli that is possible through the use of mass media. And this ultimately could lead to propaganda that is tailor-made to an individual and it has the ability to shape specific behaviors and outcomes at a global scale. In the case of TikTok subliminals, do they actually work? No. We've shown before that subliminal priming, yes, does exist. It can't exactly change your height. It can change your eye color and it certainly cannot change your race. 
they have very subtle effects and can only last a couple of seconds and influence judgment in very, very simple ways. In the case of TikTok subliminals, I guess an explanation could be a change in intentional focus. I mean, it doesn't change your biology or how you look, but it does change where you're looking at. In turn, this shift can feel to an individual that there is a significant change, but who knows, maybe in the future, if Hessling was right, it can create subliminals that can impact us in more tremendous ways. Maybe not biologically, but subliminals can have a tremendous impact on our life.